Hi, my name is Olga Maus from Pixel Train. I'm a senior 3D VFX and game dev trainer with more than 20 years of experience in teaching artists all over the world. This advertising free tutorial was made possible by my wonderful Patreons. If you like it, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. And maybe you also want to become a Pixel Train patron yourself. With that, you support the making of these tutorials and get even more benefits like patron only tutorials, technical articles, industry news, Discord access, and discounts to my publications. Link in the description below. Thanks a lot, and now let's get started. Have fun. Hi, folks. My name is Elke Maus from Pixel Train, and I think it's time again for another Blender for Production tutorial. This time we want to talk about the extension or add on with the name Stored Views. And this add on is quite a powerful one, and I use it all the time in my daily production work. And it gives you the ability to store different views onto your scene, or better to say, you can bookmark views into your scene, something which you may be used to in other 3D applications. And beside of that, you also can use it to generate cameras and also generate cutscenes and so on. So I think it's quite a useful add-on which we now look into. This add-on was part of the Blender standard installation before we had the extension platform. So if you have an older version of Blender, it is there. You only need to go to the add-ons and search for it. And now with the new Blender version, we go into the extension platform and install it from there. So let's go. We go here to edit and go to the preferences. And here under the get extensions, you can search now here for this add-on. So it's named stored reviews. Here we go. And here I can now say I want to install this stored views add-on. And that's it. Now it's active. And if you want to make sure that's also there the next time, you can go here and save your preferences only to make sure that it's saved out. Okay, now let's get started. Where is this add-on? If you press the N key on your keyboard and go here now to the tab view, you will see that at the end of the list, you have now a new section here with stored views. And you see there's only one button. And the interesting thing with this stored views add-on is, that all the configuration you do now with this add-on is stored inside of your blend file. That means if you come back tomorrow, open your blend file, you will see all your stored views again. And that's a really, really powerful feature. The first thing you always have to do is to initialize. And after you have done that, you get this little user interface here. And you see that I have here two views from last time I used that. And to make a fresh start, let's remove these two here. As said, we have more than one functionality inside of this add-on. So let's start with the bookmarking of different views. You see, in this scene here, I'm in the back of this classroom here. And maybe this is a view you need all the time for checking your lighting or things like that. What you now can do is you can go here to this here and you now can decide do you want to store the whole view or the point of view? So there are two options for that. And be aware that if you switch that, the, the list underneath maybe changes. And then you click here on Save Current. And this now stores our view here. And we can name the view by clicking here and say, this, for example, is our classroom full view. Okay, that's it. Now we can change our view. So let's navigate, for example, to the outside, because if you're li making lighting setups, you want to make a view from the outside. So let's press the home key here and say, for the first try, I want to have this view here because this is the view I normally want to work with when I'm outside. So again, go here now to save current and click it again. And now we have the second view and this is the classroom outside. And now we have stored that. And from now on, we can use now the switching of the views. So instead of searching back here, the position inside of the classroom, the only thing you have to do is clicking here in front of the name here onto this little cubic icon. And you see, we switch now between these two views. And from there, we can start moving around and doing something. And this is really, really great in big scenes and you can have as many as you like. But what if you have now a view, for example, this classroom outside, which is not 
completely the thing you are after. So easy like that. So I go here and say, maybe the outside view would be better if I have something like that here. So let's make your view here. And instead of clicking the icon, you will see now here this dot icon. And this dot icon overrides the current setting. So I go to classroom outside, click here on this dot icon, and now I've overwritten the classroom outside. And if I now switch between them, you see exactly what you're after. So easy like that. And you won't believe me if I tell you that this year will delete you from the list. So this is the bookmarking of different views into your scene. But as I said, this add-on has a lot more to offer than this functionality. And this functionality, I think it's great. The next thing you can do with that is you have a full camera generating workflow. And for this, I will make a little scene preparation. First, I go back into my classroom. And then I go here into my scene hierarchy and make a new collection here. Let's say this is the camera list. And to find it later better, right mouse button click, make it radish and bring it to the top. And I also make sure that it's here selected, so every new object we generate will fall into this collection. So let's say we are a student and we want to have a camera from the student point of view. So let's navigate here and I will use now a keyboard shortcut here Q, which normally brings up the quick favorites. I have Hardops installed, so don't think about this long list. Here are my quick favorites. And I have here the walk navigation of Blender as a quick favorite. And this is something I will do a tutorial in the future maybe. So let's go into the walk navigation here. And now I can move myself like in a game engine. And let's search here for a student seat. And let's look here into the classroom like this. I make a left mouse button click to now say I want to sit here. And now you see, this is the view I want to have for my student. And now I can go here to new camera to view. But the interesting thing only to have a little bit of background here is I don't have any cameras at the moment in this scene. So if I press at the moment the zero key on my numpad, you see the keyboard shortcuts in the left here. You see, I don't switch into camera because I don't have any. But I can generate directly camera at the position which I'm now standing here by going here and click new camera to view. And the moment I do that, you see here is your camera window and your passepartout. And we have here now a new camera. And also here under the camera selector, we have the camera. Let's make some settings here for the camera first. So select the camera. And I go to the viewport display here, make the passepartout a little bit more prominent. And also I want to have a wider lens, for example, 22 or so. And we also can zoom in here a little bit, something like that here. Okay, if you now want to correct this camera, it's normal camera work. So since this version, we have this little lock here, we can lock now here our camera, we get this red outline here to make some fine adjustments if you like, but I like what I see. So deactivate the lock here. And now this view camera here, which we now name camera student, is now our first camera. And this was easy to go. Let's say we need another camera. And this time we need a camera here from the teacher's position. Let's move over to the teacher's seat. Here we go. And let's go here, maybe a little bit up, and we look into our classroom. No one there. Fine. Okay, let's click here. We found our position. The rest we can do later. And now you see we have now two buttons. And now be aware we can generate a new camera from this view, or we can move the selected camera, which is still the camera student to this view, which is not the thing we are after. So we say, I want to have another camera here. I click here and now we have the camera for the teacher. Perfect. Passepartout a little bit up. 
and maybe also a 22. So now we have our two cameras. And the cool thing now is we can switch between them with the camera selector. Again, it's the left icon here with the camera symbol. You can now switch between them and you can look into your classroom. But in the background is more happening. And this is now important that you understand what's going on here. So let's make some adjustments. Under the viewport display, I want to change that I always see the name of the camera here in the lower left. And this is also something I do in architectural visualizations or so, where I have many cameras, I always want to see then the name of the active camera. So let's select these two cameras here. I go here to the camera section. And because I have more than one object selected, I don't only need to tick this because then only the active object is ticked. I need to hold the Option or Alt key on my keyboard and tick then. And then both cameras will have the same setting you see here. That's uh, the way Blender thinks about multi selections. You have to press the Alt key for that. Okay, now we see at the moment I'm in the camera student. And I see here the other camera. And this camera here has also a triangle here at the top. Let's try to find a good position here to show that a little bit better. Let's go in here. Yeah, I think now you can see it. So this camera here, the teacher's camera, has a triangle here for showing what's up, but it's not filled. This camera here at the moment, this is the student camera, has a filled triangle. And this is Splendor's indicator for what camera is active at the moment. You can have as many cameras as you like in a Blender scene, but there's always one active camera. And this is then the camera which is rendered out. And it's stored here in the scene settings. So here in the scene settings, you see that the active camera in our scene is camera student. And if you ever go to render or so, this is the camera which is rendered. If you want to render something from another camera, you always have to make another camera the active camera. You can do that by going here, switching it here, or you can use this add-on here. And what you now see is I'm not in a camera view. That's important. So if you are still in the camera view with NumPad Zero, go out of that. If you now click here onto the icon, you will see that this icon in reality switches the active camera only. And the reason why we saw this switching was because we were in the camera view. If you are not in a camera view, you can switch the active camera here without dropping into the camera. If you also want to drop into the camera and preview it, for this we have here this icon with the monitor. So if I click now here on student, you will see that the student is now the active camera. You see it here and here. And you also look through this camera. And same if you click here now onto the monitor for the teacher. So that's the difference between these two icons. Last but not least, there is another icon. And this icon is really cool if you want to make cutscenes. Let's say we go into the student here. And the student is the active camera. And we now go to the timeline. And what I want is I want to make a cutscene. First, I want to show the view from the student and see, for example, the teacher talking. And then I want to switch back to the view of the teacher so that I can see the student answering. And to do that, we have to switch Blender's active camera. And to do that, we need to bind the active camera to a marker. And this is normally a complex workflow. You have to go here to marker and you have to bind these cameras to marker by making them active and do that. And look at that, how easy it can now be. So we go here to frame one. We look from the student's perspective, the teacher talking. And so I go now to the teacher's camera and click here the bind symbol. This is this little triangle here. And what we now get is we now have the view from the teacher. And that's exactly what I don't want. <laughs> okay, let's go here to student and override that. Now we look from the student's perspective and see the teacher talking. And you see here on my timeline, this is now the marker. And let's say he talks for, let's say, two seconds. So we go to frame 60. 
and now we can switch over. We want to see now the student answering, so we need now the perspective of the teacher. And this means I have to click here. And now we see here our invisible student. And if we now animate the whole thing here, you see this is now done here. You see now we have these camera markers. If you want to retime, you know, we can move them around here both or if you deselect only one. But yeah, this is the functionality of this button. I think that's enough for today about this great add-on. As I said, I use it all the time. If you have more questions about this add-on, please ask in the comments below. And if you like these kinds of tutorials, please consider becoming a Pixel Train patron. Have fun with Blender, your Hacker Mouse.